Hello friends, welcome back to hi games my name is Joseph and Sony has registered a new PS5 model in Japan, Days Gone is now Steam Deck verified, EA shows more Dead Space remake, Square getting ready to show more Final Fantasy and more. Let's get into the PlayStation news. We start with Sony registering a new PS5 model in Japan, PS5 series CFI 1200 has received design certification from Japan's Ministry of Internal Affairs and Communications and it said the new device uses updated radio equipment. This is nothing out of the ordinary with Sony having registered previous new models for PS5 already, for example the CFI 1102A reduced some weight of the console by changing to a smaller heatsink and added a new screw to attach the base. April NPD sales for the US are out. PS5 was not the top one in unit sales but led in hardware dollar sales. However, the PS4 was overtaken by the Switch in total unit sales in the US. The best selling game for the US was LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga which top charts for all platforms based on dollar sales. It was followed by Elden Ring led by PlayStation versions for a small margin. Elden Ring is still the top selling game of 2022 so far. Other PlayStation games include MLB The Show which was the third best game, Horizon Forbidden West which dropped 2 spots but still in the top 10 and Gran Turismo 7 is still holding at number 9. Sony Band Studio has announced on their Twitter account that Days Gone for PC is now Steam Deck verified. This indicates that Valve has endorsed compatibility of the game with the portable hardware after their testing that includes all functionality being accessible when using the default controller configuration, showing Steam Deck controller icons, in-game interface text is legible on the Steam Deck and the default graphics performing well. The hardware was able to run the game already, but now it's under Valve certification. It's really curious to see them embracing this new portal with their PC games. I would really love for Sony to do another portable console, but if it's not happening, I think having their games on PC and Steam Deck compatible is just as great. The next story is about a leak from Aesthetic Gamer aka Dust Golem on a Silent Hill game. I already covered that in another video which you can check here. But the TLDR is that those golems share 4 pictures of what seems to be a new Silent Hill, they were quickly taken down and his account locked, which certainly adds to the validity of this leak. According to those golems, Sony is still involved with this game in some capacity, and it may still include ideas from Kojima's Silent Hills like texting you in real time. A new firmware update has been made available for both PS4 and PS5, 9.60 and 5.10 respectively, with some performance improvement. Although some Reddit users claim to have seen improved variable refresh rate performance after updating the PS5 console, removing flickering when turning on the feature for some users. Still nothing about including low frame rate compensation, but if the recent update really improved the feature, we can hopefully expect a new patch that includes LFC in the future. A PS2 classic for the upcoming PlayStation Plus Premium may have leaked. Universal Entertainment filed a trademark in Japan for Shadow Hearts, a PS2 game released back in 2003. Gematsu got word from Universal back in March 2021 that they didn't have any plans for a remake or a new entry in the franchise, so it could be that the game is being considered to be part of the classic lineup for the new service. Soccer Punch seems to be assembling a team for a multiplayer game with possible ties to the Sly Cooper franchise. Their senior multiplayer systems designer job posting reads, are you the sort of systems designer that reads through board game instruction manuals as if they were spy thrillers? Do you look through the rule set and instantly see the opportunity for betrayals? Those are all references to Sly for sure, but I think they were just being funny in the job posting and nothing more. We'll see. We have a new leak from the set of The Last of Us HBO TV series from HBO The Last of Us on Twitter via PlayStation Universe. The photos show the hospital from the Firefly Lab and could possibly follow the events of the game very closely. They say filming for the first season is in the final stage as the series is expected to launch at some point in 2023. With the summer of gaming getting real close, it seems Sony may take part in it this year if the most recent rumor is to be believed. Ben Turbid's Jeff Grubb on his latest podcast mentioned that I'm also hearing from multiple people that Sony will actually have a show the first week of June. I can't confirm that but I'm hearing from a bunch of different people but maybe that's just Skullbutt. Last year they had the Horizon State of Play in the last week of May and the showcase are on the second week of September. If Sony does indeed do a showcase in June, what could be there? Well, that's our next story. Square is gearing up to celebrate the Final Fantasy 35th anniversary with news dropping soon. On an earnings call they talked about it translated by analyst David Gibson via BGC. Square Enix fiscal year looks to have several new titles but is centered around a major franchise. 
they said to be dropping news about the 35th anniversary this or next month, and they're very optimistic about Final Fantasy XVI after watching the upcoming trailer teased by Naoki Yoshida last week. Back in January, Yoshinori Kitase said that with the 25th anniversary of Final Fantasy VII this year, they wanted to celebrate and share some information within the next 12 months, so a Final Fantasy VII Remake Part II reveal wouldn't be out of the realm of possibility. EA Motive had a livestream for the Dead Space Remake on Thursday focused on the art of the game, like how they are creating immersive new environments, improving visual effects, lighting and character models. Later on Twitter, the official game account announced that Dead Space Remake is releasing on January 27, 2023 for PS5, Xbox Series and PC. The follow-up to Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order finally has a name according to VentureBeat's Jeff Grubb. On his latest episode of the Grub Snacks Premium Show, he teased the chat to guess the name, and one of them guessed it with Survivor. Grub didn't explain anything about it, but it seems the final name will be Star Wars Jedi Survivor. The Insider previously said the game won't be out until 2023 and that it's going to be new gen only, and that it could have been shown on May 4, but that didn't happen. Maybe an official reveal is not far off. Deathloop update number 3 is now out for PS5 and introduces photo mode with poses, filters and more for you to capture your murderous adventure through Black Reef Island. Quick access to photo mode can be enabled by going to the controller tab and looking for the photo mode quick access, turning that on allows you to double tap the options button to bring up the photo mode. New accessibility options add customizable difficulty, new HUD and subtitle options like size, opacity and color, easier menu navigation and more. According to lead UI UX designer Joan Bassers, this was in response to all the feedback they received from accessibility reviews and videos. Finally, there's a set of free PSN avatars that you can claim using these codes. There are a couple of updates from Remedy on Alan Wake 2, celebrating the 12th anniversary since the game debuted on Xbox 360. They reveal new concept art showing Alan Wake, an enemy and two locations. Director Sam Lake said development is going well and a good chunk of the game is playable. However, to allow the team to be focused on development, there won't be a summer update as they promised when it was announced back at the Game Awards last year, but it's still scheduled to release in 2023 for PS5, Xbox Series and PC. Rounding up the video, they announced AMC has acquired the rights for the Alan Wake TV show and Alan Wake Remastered will be debuting on Nintendo Switch this fall. The first story DLC for Dying Light 2 Stay Human has been delayed to September after being originally scheduled for summer. They addressed the situation on the game's official Twitter account, saying they would need more development time, but to make up for that they will be releasing Chapter 1 in the footsteps of a night runner with contents and events, photo mode and more. As usual we end the last episode of the week with PlayStation Store sales. There's extended play and deals under 15 both until May 25th, and Tiny Tina's Wonderlands is the deal of the week with 20% off until May 18. Tiny Tina's Wonderlands is starting at 48 and it's its first price drop. Some other highlights include the Spider-Man Game of the Year for 20, the Witcher Game of the Year Edition for 10 and it will get a PS5 version at some point, Mass Effect Legendary Edition for 24, Rainbow Six Extraction Deluxe Edition for 25, the lowest it's been, Life is Strange Remastered at 26 with its first price drop, Dead Cells Game Bundle with DLC at 23, Moonlighter Complete Edition under 7, the lowest without PlayStation Plus, and a way out at 750. The Division 2 is free to play this weekend until May 15 and it also has a new update. And there you go, that's all the time we have for this episode of PlayStation News. Let us know what you think about any of these stories in the comments below, like or dislike to share your feedback, check out other videos you may enjoy while you're here, and consider subscribing for more PlayStation content. Thank you so much for watching, my name is Joseph, this is Hype for Games, and let's get hyped!